Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms video. This is Dragothian here and today we're going to be continuing our talent tree guide and it's going to be on the attack talent tree and we're going to do all the talent trees. Some of them are going to be very short like the versatility or the integration tree. It's just going to have a big red X through it and then we'll continue on but the attack tree is actually very very useful. It's not as useful as some of the other ones however especially considering you know recently we've, we've started to see that you get more severely wounded from base damage than just raw skill damage the attack tree is becoming more and more relevant and more and more critical to know exactly how to spec it out so i wanted to show you exactly how to do that whenever you're specking out an attack commander i did a lot of that on my last uh community monday stream yesterday where um most of the attack commanders that i did basically had the same build on the attack tree because of there's the specific talents that are critical in it and then ones that you should definitely avoid. So we're going to go through and show you exactly what you need to have in your attack talent trees. And then on just as importantly, what you need to avoid. Because there's things in here that are absolutely worthless. And in fact, actually hinder the performance of your commander. As we're jumping in, just as a reminder, please hit the subscribe button if you have not done so already. Hit the bell notification, all that fun stuff. I am a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms. So let's jump into it. Alright, so attack tree. There's a couple things that you really want to make sure that you snag, all right? So Lord of War is actually a very, very critical one, and one that's not really talked about. You're talking about increasing your attack by half, 0.5, of your commander star level. Most of the time, when you're using a primary commander, and if you're using the attack talent tree, you're going to have a six-star commander because you want to have him level 60. So that means that you're going to have 3% attack on each level here so when we go to it because we definitely want to get there right so you get one and a half percent attack here when you click it you get a half percent one percent and then one and a half percent times the number of stars so you have a six star commander and then you've got one and a half percent of that you're looking at six plus three that's nine percent nine percent attack is huge uh, again adding to that normal encounter attack damage plus Somewhere in the formula of skill damage, attack is factored in. So this is definitely a benefit to have. This is a really, really solid talent to have. You also want to have a lot of rage generation. doesn't matter what you're doing. You want to have the, the primary skill of any commander that you've got on the field, proccing and going off as much as possible. So burning blood right here is definitely a must-have. One of the most critical pieces of the attack talent tree is effortless. It's got the same mechanic... Um, that the previous talent here had. Let's go ahead and get to it so I can show you exactly what it is. There's another 1.5% attack. March speed's always good, although not critical, but still really nice to have. <clears throat> Effortless, though, during battles, increases all damage dealt by a half percent every 10 seconds, up to a maximum of 10%. Now, this isn't really critical for Canyon, although you should have it on your commander anyway, but in the open field, uh, and even on rallies and garrisons, this really starts to stack up. So once you max it out, it's 2.5% every 10 seconds. So 25% after, uh, it says every 10 seconds, up to a maximum of 10%. So 10% um, gets, you get it really quickly. So that's what, 4 seconds, or 40 seconds? In 40 seconds, you get the maximum of 10%. And again, you'll see that in rallies, you'll see that in... Uh, garrisons, and you'll certainly see that in open field battle because when there's 50 armies attacking each other, there's a very good chance that you're going to be fighting with that army for more than 40 seconds at a time. So that will definitely stack up to that 10%, and again, increases all damage dealt. This is not just your raw damage, this is skill damage as well, and a lot of folks like to pair, like an Alex with a YSG, for instance, and that all damage, that 10%, Works for YSG's nuke and skill damage. So um, definitely something to have. Effortless is one of those ones you definitely must have in the attack tree. Now on this top side here, it's, it's definitely an augmented um, adding to damage type of side. And a lot of times, again, with this series, you've noticed that they've split the, the tree up into two different paths. This path is to just cause as much damage as possible, including fight to the death here. Increases all damage dealt by 2% up to 6% but also increasing damage taken by 1% up to 3%. This is a, I don't want to say a novelty, but it's definitely something that you want to make sure that you're not using in the wrong circumstance or situation because 
while 6% damage extra does sound nice, taking 3% extra damage doesn't. And unless you're fighting something that's really, really a lot lower than you, or if you're if you're the main whale in a, in a kingdom and um, you know you you need to be putting out as much damage as possible or something like that, that's where fight to the death comes into play. This is actually not a bad idea for Canyon either because of the T3 situation and how that works in Canyon. Um, this isn't a bad one to have because the the incoming damage isn't necessarily as good as the outgoing damage there. So um, you might want to have this in Canyon, but I, I generally try to avoid fight to the death for normal fighting because just taking 3% extra damage, especially if you've got a con on you or a YSG on you, all the AOE damage you've got out there, you aren't necessarily putting out as much damage as you're taking in from AOEs and things like that. So um, while this may look like a better trade, in, rea in reality, it's really not. So again, this side of the attack tree is really geared towards um, towards having as much damage output as possible. And that's why we took it to Effortless. Now on this side of the tree, it's more damage mitigation and enhancements while fighting. So if we look at this one here, Unyielding, increasing counterattack damage dealt by a half percent up to one and a half percent. And then Armored Joints and reduces all damage taken by a half percent up to one and a half percent. I do like both of those. Again, for an attack commander, this is not a bad one to have. And if you have points that you need in other trees, like the infantry tree, if you want to go up to elite soldiers and things like that, you can shed those. Okay, those aren't critical, but they're nice to haves, if that makes sense. Now, let's continue down into here, and then I'll start talking about martial mastery at the bottom, which is this one right here. So Getting these two unlocks this path here, and that unlocks Victory Charge. Now, Victory Charge is not one of the ones that I would ever recommend for normal fighting. It says, when armies led by this commander defeat an army, excluding garrisons, belonging to another governor, attack is increased by 2% for the next 10 seconds. This effect will be removed once troops have left the battle. So, you have to continually kill armies quickly. It's not just killing armies and moving on to the next army. You have to move. You have to do them quickly, and that's where the that's where the real real time battles don't tend to really warrant victory charge because it's either going to take a while to kill something, or they run and you didn't kill anything and this this talent effectively is wasted because you're not killing that target. You're just attacking it, causing damage, and then they run away or something to that effect. So. Um, to me, this is not worth it for open field fighting and things like that. However, this is an excellent, excellent skill for Canyon because you are five versus five. And if you partner an attack based commander with three other armies that's attacking one target, you kill that target, you defeat that target, then you move on to the other four, you have this bonus. You'll have this bonus. So attack is increased by 2% for the next 10 seconds. It would up to 6% if this is maxed, which is good. It's good to have. And that's attack attack only. It's not all damage only. So something to think about. Um, for canyon-based builds, I do have a build like that on my Discord if you want to go check it out. But um, this is kind of a novelty to me. And only in very, very specific situation of canyon should it be used. Last stand. This is probably the worst last talent in any of the talent trees that are available. <laughs> so normal troop, troop attacks have a 10% chance to cause this commander's troops to go on a rampage, increasing the damage by 2% for the next 3 seconds, up to 10%, which is nice, but skills cannot be used for the duration of the effect. So you can't use your skills. So this really lends itself to being paired up with the commander that has Procable skills on the second, third, and fourth skills, if that makes sense. So very rarely is there a situation where this would make sense. I, I don't even think there is one, which is why nobody uses Last Stand. Maybe some of the future commanders coming out will have very weak primary skills, but really good uh, pr and second, third, and fourth and expertise skills that make it worthwhile to have Last Stand. But as of right now, nothing comes to mind as a, as a commander pairing that would make Last Stand be worthwhile, not only from the actual buff itself, but the points it takes to get there um, just seem like a wasted um, wasted amount of points. It just doesn't make sense. There's, there's no reason for it. Now, Martial Mastery. 
Martial Mastery is a situational talent, but it is a very good one. So um, you want to use Martial Mastery if you're not pairing the attack commander with another skill damage commander. So for instance, it says normal attack damage is increased by up to 6%, but decreases active skill damage by 3%, up to 3% if you max it out. So if you're going to pair, let's, I've already got Alex up, so Alex with YSG. You don't want to take this because you're reducing the damage that YSG does by 3%. There's no reason to do that. You're nerfing yourself. So, however, if you're pairing Alex up with Richard or Charles or whatever, any non-nuking commander, um, this is actually awesome because all you're doing is buffing yourself and you're not debuffing yourself. So Martial Mastery is one that you should use if you're not pairing up with a nuking commander as a secondary. So um, I know LG has the attack tree. I know Alex has the attack tree. Attila has the attack tree. I mean, there's tons of commanders that have the attack tree. Tamiris, Ramses. Um, you know, there's tons of commanders that have the attack tree. Some of those commanders have nuke damage, like LG as primary. Active skill damage, right? That first skill, it's active. It has to be cast for it to be used. So that first skill LG uses, that's a nuke. That's an active skill damage. You don't want to have martial mastery on LG. Um, same thing with Ramses. You don't want to have that on Ramses. You don't want to have it on Tamiris. All those things you don't want to have martial mastery on. But for an, for a tanky group that you want to just uh, increase the, the damage of the armies, you can do that, but just don't pair it up with a, a nuking commander. All right, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. That's basically the attack tree in a nutshell. Don't go after the last stand uh, talent. Fight to the death is situational. It's one of those ones where I, I think it's probably the juice is not worth the squeeze. Martial Mastery, definitely worth it um, if you're not pairing with a nuking commander. Victory Charge, only good for Canyon. All four of these primary level one uh, talents here are very good. Lord of War and Effortless being the best. And then Burning Blood, obviously generating rage is always a good thing, especially if you're um, swarmed. This will give you uh, extra a lot of extra rage. However, if you're getting swarmed, you need a bucket. Get out of there. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We're going to continue and wrap up this Talent Tree Guide playlist as well. We're going through all the old stuff that we haven't completed, completely finished yet, making sure we got those nice and topped off for everyone so they have a full guide for everything that we're trying to do. Hope you guys have enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. Cheers. Have a good one. Take care.